fumbles and funnels. It was a beautiful summer afternoon on the island of Sodor. Bill, Ben, Thomas, and Mavis were busy working at the quarry. Thomas was collecting some stone to take to Brendam Docks. Salty was coming to help him soon. Mavis was busy shunting freight cars into their proper sidings and making sure everything was orderly and efficient. Bill and Ben were rushing about, pushing and pulling trucks from the loading site to the hopper. Hurry up, Ben. You're blocking my track. Hurry yourself. Boshy pushy. Stop arguing. Ben moved sulkily away to the hopper while a pleased Bill moved up the tracks towards the loading site. This loading site is a steep incline up a cliff. At the top is where stone is loaded into freight cars, where it is then taken back down to the hopper in order to refill it. Today, however, trouble was lurking. A truck was backing up, but it backed up too far. It smashed into a pile of stone that was just above the track Bill was traveling upon. The stone rumbled down the steep cliffside. It was too late for Bill's driver or fireman to react. They could only watch helplessly as the rock tumbled towards them. Cinders and ashes, look! A horrified Thomas watched Bill topple off the track, slide down the cliffside, and crash at the bottom. He was mortified. Salty oiled in, with a contorted expression on his face. Arr, what's happened here, matey? I'm not sure. I saw the landslide, and it knocked Bill over, and now he has crashed. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's help the little guy out, yarr. Thomas and Salty rolled tentatively over towards Bill. By that time, Mavis and Ben were already there, their drivers and firemen helping Bill's driver and fireman out of the rubble. The quarry manager telephoned the yard, and Edward soon arrived with the breakdown train. My, my, what a mess! Was anyone hurt? Ahoy, Edward! Arr, it doesn't look good, me hearty. They are injured, but nothing serious. But they won't be able to work for a while. Well, it could have been worse. Let's get Bill back on the rails. Ben pushed him back to the shed. You make a funny sight! You're dented and battered! Bill gave no reply. It took weeks to repair Bill. All the while, Bill was still grumbling. At long last, Bill was repaired. His driver and farming were still not recovered, so substitutes were to come until Bill's driver and farming were ready for service. The next day, the engines worked hard, but the trucks were being difficult for Bill. Bill tried his best, but by the end of the day, he arrived back at the shed late and tired. Now, because of the twin engine's small size and short funnels, dust is constantly collecting in their smoke boxes. Each night, their drivers and firemen cleared each engine's smoke box out. But, in the confusion and rush in the search for a substitute driver and fireman for Bill, the substitutes had not been notified of this procedure. And because Bill had come in late, Ben's driver and fireman had already finished and gone home. And Ben was already sleeping. So the substitutes were unaware of this daily maintenance. Bill had been too tired to tell them, and assumed they would know. Exhausted, Bill went to sleep. The next day, Bill was shunting. He bashed the trucks as they moaned and groaned. The trucks were just as uncooperative as they had been the day before. Suddenly, Bill felt very queer. The driver guided Bill gently into a side. Uh, I feel stuffy got out and inspected him all over. Your funnel 
totally blocked with dust. Didn't you clean it? I was supposed to clean it? Yes! Diesel pushed Bill back to the shed. Ah, this is the most interesting thing I've done all day. That night, Bill's smoke box was cleaned, but Ben started to tease him. Right after you are done being repaired, you have another accident. You really should be more reliable. Bill's cheeks turned red, and he went to sleep. The next day, however, Ben's fire was slow to start. Your fire won't start, Ben. You really should be more reliable. And Bill puffed away with a grin on his face, leaving Ben sulking in the shed.